You're not completely useless. You can always serve as a bad example. You're welcome. Would you look at this? This is a tree Jeremy recently cut down. And look what's grown on it. The stump. I thought it wasn't even real. You were making fun of me. I was making fun of him. I said there's a bush leaning over. But no, it actually started growing leaves. A stump bouquet. <laughs> That's amazing. Beech tree? This is a beech tree. How crazy is that? Weirdest thing. So I went and collected a bunch of apples today that had fallen off a tree. And I'm going to go dump them out for the deer and the bear and whatever else feels like eating them. Here's a nice big that's, looks, bear log. That's actually poop that looks been eaten. Yeah, half eaten. It looks There's like... way more than that there. <laughs> They smell like they're really starting to rot, which is awesome. Hopefully the smell will bring the animals in. There you go, I'll go pick more in a couple days maybe. For now it's a good start. So it's the next day after we put the apples out, I just wanted to come up and see if anything came in for that. And pretty much just a whole pile of birds. So it's been only up there for maybe 12 hours, so that's not very long anyway. They'll come in for it. What I want to do is I want to go over a comment that somebody made about feeding the deer or animals, whatever. So here it is. Linda S. Making pets out of wild animals by luring them to a safe area with food in order to shoot them is not hunting. It is slaughter. I am not anti-hunting, but that is not hunting. You definitely do not need that meat to survive as your income supports your lifestyle quite well. Just because you can does not mean you should. And the cost and effort you put into it negates any meat purchases. Unscribing. Unsubscribing, obviously. Alright, so I just want to go through that comment and show the flaws in that thinking. So, she says making pets out of wild animals by luring them into a safe area with food in order to shoot them is not hunting. Well, it actually is hunting. Um, putting out deer feed made by a hunting company to feed deer so it, that is what it is but having said that so i'll just go over that one sentence so making pets out of wild animals by luring them into a safe area with food in order to shoot them is not hunting okay so that feed by putting out feed right now i have a bear tag and a buck tag that's all i have so i'm feeding off that food that we have out there the hostas apples and the feed deer feed rack stack or deer feed that I put out there I have moose eating I don't have a moose tag so I won't be shooting the moose so the moose is eating for free he's getting lots of good food the sow and her two cubs that have come in there the bears I don't have tags for them you can't shoot a sow you can't shoot the two cubs so so they're just eating the feed the raccoons no the coyote, no, although that coyote, I will shoot him if I'm here because they go after the deer and that causes a problem with the deer population. Luckily, luckily I don't have a whole pile of coyotes in here, but I do actually have a license for uh, coyotes. So that one I would hunt and he, they could be a problem. The does that are coming in, I don't have a doe tag, so I won't be shooting the does. So the does are eating to help them I'm feeding the does in particular to try to get a buck to come in so what I want to do is I want to actually this area has a lot of moose and bear so by feeding and I've mentioned this before but people just they don't want to have a conversation they just want to say oh you bet this is what it is this is not right you shouldn't do this blah 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 not thinking of all the things on the other side of the fence so I'm feeding those does. So the more does that come in, it helps get my deer population up. It's just like somebody running, uh, running an outfitter. Some of them, they'll have, you know, like thousands of acres and deer all through it. So, and then they manage that land. So if you, you could be feeding, you know, I'll just say random numbers. Say you're feeding, you have a big, huge food, uh, food plot. There's 50 deer, 50 deer coming in there eating. You have a tag to, to take one. So you take one deer to, 50 you let 49 they eat all winter 
they have a great source of food all winter to come in and eat until the next year and you just harvest one. I mean, that's a wonderful thing for the deer to help them thrive through the winter and have a sustainable food source to go to. So it's not like you, it's not like you put out a place for them to come in and eat and then you sit and pick them all off and you just have bodies all over the place. That's not the case, you know? Anyways, out of all the things I've had that come in is the coyote and I haven't had a buck on there in a few months, but I have a buck tag and the male bear, not the, not the sow. So that, those are the only things I have tags for and I'm barely even pushing the hunt on them anyway. I'm just, I'm really trying to build up the hunt better for deer going forward because this area is so full of bear and moose and because it's been cut around us, it's put the deer numbers down and they move closer to the thicker woods. So I'm trying to build it back up. So where does are, bucks will be too. So, but I'm not shooting anything unless I have the tag for it. So anyways, another line of thinking on that, I hope like someone explained it, what I was trying to get at with that, where there's a whole bunch of animals just eating off anything I put out there for nothing. Like they're not in this ready to be picked off a big pile of animals. Anyways, so they say that with that line of thinking, from Linda here, and I know other people have this kind of line of thinking too, but that kind of thinking that that I'm giving a safe spot, to, a, you know, safe in quotations as she put it, a safe spot to come in and eat and making pets out of them. I, mean, I don't know, I'm not making pets out of them, but I'm not petting them and, you know, calling them, naming them or anything. But you know, what does do that, and I'm, I'm not against what I'm about to say at all. I'm just gonna make a point from her line of thinking what you're gonna run into. So let's say, so what do you do with farming? So what is farming? So you have a field full of cows, right? So you're making pats out of your cows. This is going off Linda's thinking, not my thinking. I don't think this, but you're making pets out of your cows. You're giving those cows, you're feeding them. You're putting food in the trough. You're giving them water. You're giving them a safe place, what they think is safe, their field, their barn. They think that's safe. They think that's a safe place to be, right? According to your thinking, it's just a false sense of security you're giving to the cow. And then that cow's just gonna be slaughtered. In the slaughterhouse, just killed for meat. That poor cow doesn't see that coming. He, he never saw it coming. Ne thought, oh, I have this wonderful owner in my wonderful field and I get to eat this grass all day. And then I go in my nice little barn and then the farmer pays money to put feed in my trough and does all these things. And then he's just gonna turn around and kill that cow. What a horrible person. Do you see how stupid this is? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Do you see how actually stupid that is, that line of thinking? It's ridiculous. I don't look at farming that way or hunting that way, neither one. But, but just with that the line of thinking, it's a complete, it's a joke, come on. All right, anyways, another one, another line she said, you definitely do not need that meat to survive as your income supports your lifestyle quite well. Well, first of all, you don't know what my income is, so maybe it don't, maybe it does. Another part of it is that it's completely irrelevant. If I had, unlimited amount of money or if I had like hardly no money you can't put a price on good organic quality meat that's not pumped full of antibiotics and steroids and 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 whatever other stuff they put in when you get down your meat aisle at the grocery store that stuff's so full of crap so it's priceless there's lots of people who spend money to go to a grass-fed organic farm and send top dollar for the best beef they can get best chicken all that right so there's no price on that. So to compare that to going and buying meat at the grocery store is also silly and just makes no sense either. So it's priceless to spend. Trust me, I have zero colon. I have my entire large intestine taken out. So having good meat is very nice. I, when I was in Ontario, when I was sick, I was chasing, I was going and buying it actually from organic farms, spending lots of money that could have been put in other places, but you can't put a price on your health. So. If you want good organic meat and the best stuff, well, wild game, in my opinion, is one of the best places to get that. So, and you can't put a price on it. Having said that, that feed, I put out three bags. You know what that costs? 60 bucks, that's it, $60 I put out. So I put out three bags of feed. 
I started in August. I don't. I haven't been putting it out all year. Right. I'm just saying right right now. Maybe I end up putting a couple hundred bucks worth of it throughout the whole year. <clears throat> Not saying I will. I don't know yet. We'll see. Last year I put out uh, maybe I think the same three bags. Three bags this year. Three bags last. And what I do after I put the feed out for you know going into hunting, then I'll put out the apples. And the apples are free. I have a small apple orchard just off the side of our property with a few trees there. I go down in there and I collect the apples and I put them there to replace the feed now because <laughs> basically the crows come in into all the corn anyway so we'll go with apples now uh through hunting season i'll keep putting those out maybe i'll put another bag of feed maybe i won't but the cost of it i spent 60 dollars, which is completely irrelevant because i don't care i would spend any any on it it's the same thing on you spend money on hobbies like hundreds of dollars on golfing well you know some people would look at golfing and be like, what's the point of spending all that money on golfing and then going and just hitting a ball all over flat land and chasing a ball all around, you know? I go golfing. I, I mean, I don't go golf much, but I've gone golfing. I went once this year, maybe twice this year, and I enjoyed it. So I'm not crapping on golfing. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? That's, if you look at it that way, you could be like, well, golfing just makes no sense. You spend $100 for the day, drive around the cart, drive a white ball, hit it all over the place. You know, it doesn't matter what you do with your money. Who gives a crap, you know? So the price of it is priceless anyway when you're comparing the meat that you're going to get at the grocery store compared to the meat you're going to get from hunting. So you can't put a price on it even though I'm barely spending anything. So saying the cost and the effort you put into Gates Any Meat Purchase is complete bull****. So, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. So anyways, just wrapping all that up. If you, get, if you had, you know, a farmer who feeds his animals, spends money on feed, feeds the animals and this is just say a raw organic one a good one where they're given the you know you're feeding goats or you're feeding chickens meat chickens whatever you're going to feed you have a pen you have a nice pen all this stuff give them a good life and then you turn around and kill them well with linda's thinking that's completely would be poor tactics that's not right this is somebody who eats meat linda she's not anti-hunting or anti if she was a vegetarian okay at least it's a vegetarian i totally don't agree with it all with that but i'm saying at least she's gonna not be you know burning the candle at both ends or whatever right because she would just be coming from a place well you shouldn't be eating any meat so you shouldn't be doing the hunting you shouldn't be eating it at the store you just shouldn't be eating meat right i could at least respect that you have a leg to stand on but with this thing you don't so so again if a farmer say he has a good organic farm he's still feeding them chickens he's still feeding the goats he's still feeding those animals and then he's turning around and killing those animals and eating them for meat for his family. So that guy there, what a what a son of a gun, you know? That's what a guy. Why would he do that? So then the guy who has puts out feed for the deer and different animals in the woods and they come in, you know, there's 50 different animals eat of it, out of it. He harvests one of them. Oh, what a son of a gun. What a jerk, you know? That's not right. It's a joke, you know? It does it makes no sense what you're saying. And then, so anyways, those two, obviously, I don't think that. But if you, you look at the reality of big, farm, big farming, where the cows, everything's all jammed in. And this is what you're going to get the grocery store for the most part. This is it. But this is fine. This, for Linda, that's fine. You go there, go to the grocery store. You don't need to do that. Look at all the money you're spending all that. And you son of a, <laughs> you jerk, you're putting out that food just to, to slaughter the, all the animals. Massacre, right? But, but I have no problem, Linda says, go buy meat at the grocery store where they have the cows one on top of the other, all side by side, pumping them full of steroids to get those biggest possible, giving them antibiotics, all that so they can make the most profit, all the chickens all over the place, all on top of each other. Go buy that because you don't need to spend the money to get the good stuff. You can get that. You can just get that. You don't need to do that. Do this. This is the better way. That's more ethical to go buy it from the person where it's all jammed on top of each other pump full of drugs that's way more ethical you know you got to think things through before you just type it out it makes no sense you know anyways <laughs> it's a big deal <laughs> so obviously i'm kind of passionate about that i personally you know i'm not dogmatic in any position whatsoever i still go and i'll pick up a steak at the at the grocery store too i'm not saying that i'm i'm not being hypocritical and, and talking against it i'm just talking from that line of thinking now would i like to get away from that sure i would that's kind of one of the reasons why we're starting up our farm here because we're hoping to get the the wild game more wild game once we get set up better we're going to have more animals here and 
you know, we'll go from there. So the main point of this is feeding an animal on your farm and then killing it. There's no difference. And it's according to Linda's thinking, it actually should be worse than feeding an animal that's actually wild all the time. And then you're feeding it there and then you, you take one of them. The whole point of what we're doing is to help bring the population of deer up so that we can harvest one and it helps bring up the population, which is gonna help the deer and it's gonna help us. That's the number one reason why I'm actually putting out deer feed. So anyways, having said that, I hope I made my point and I hope maybe, I hope maybe some people that, you know, they're so quick to pull the trigger and say something to somebody without actually thinking it all through, you know, can maybe have a better outlook on that whole thing. So, so I don't know how much more I could say about that, but I'm going to make, keep up on the trail cam and keep watching for it because I love it and it's great. I'm looking forward to seeing a buck come in there. It's been a couple months since I've seen one. If one don't come in, well, all the animals ate for free, whatever, right? No problem. I love seeing the pictures. I love looking at the trail cam. I love sharing them all with you guys. It's perfect. It's great. I love it. So anyways, we'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.